Ever thought about how to tell a story where things don't go as planned, but it still ends up super cool? Today, I'm gonna dive into Tim Tollefson's race story. And it's not just about running very long. It's about sharing a tale, even when it gets tough, in a way that makes everybody care. And because this is a short film for a brand, I'm on a mission to show not only, you know, the happy wins, but also the tough times. But how do you do that with a brand? You know, to get them to sign off on a thing like that. First, you make the audience feel like they're running alongside Tim. Even as he fails. I may try to get one of these one down though. Okay. We're taking a sneak peek at how to make a movie that's so fun and inspiring. People will love watching it, even when it's a freaking ad. And we're talking about five to six minute ads. Who does that? Ha, me! <laughs> Be ready to get inspired and learn how to make your stories come alive. Like this one with Tim's big adventure, running around Mont Blanc. This video is part of a series about Tim Tollefson's racing adventure around the Mont Blanc Massif during UTMB. And it's a story that we tell about the Kraft Elite Run Team. We're making these for the brand Kraft Sportswear. So this is a branded uh, channel that we make for them. We run their whole uh, channel. We do the ads, we do the storytelling, we do the filming, we do the editing, everything. And that whole channel it has one intent and it is to brand the uh, runners and then, you know, uh, as an effect of that, brand the whole uh, uh, brand itself and give them credibility as a brand. I sat for too long, got really cold, and then on the, the big climb. I think you have too much energy. If you're talking, you need to stop. You need to stop. So for the big narrative of this film, uh, it starts with the race starts with the race in terms of like what's so challenging about it it establishes that and then you know it brings him into that action of it being really challenging and he's you know thinking about giving up it's all right Tim. no you know honestly like it's just the way it is sometimes I'm, with some people yeah, yeah. we're not I, champions <laughs> we're not champions <laughs> we're just everyday heroes is it? <laughs> and then you build the whole story around that and, and you try to think about like what scenes do you have? What key scenes can be used to turn the story? Meaning that like you're in a downward trend, everything is depressing, you're about to give up and then something happens and it sparks, you know, your will to continue. That's basically storytelling. If you want to learn even more uh, like about how I think about storytelling and the Doc Hero's journey, as I like to call it, you can download a free cheat sheet. LearnDocumentary.com slash Doc Hero, or the link is in the description. So first off, we have the start of this video. It's really crucial when you make a video for YouTube that you have the first 30 seconds has to be super sharp. They have to get the audience into the film. And you actually should look at it like, okay, so the first five seconds is critical, but I wouldn't overstress about that because sometimes you can have a slow start and it creates curiosity and people keep watching. But I think you're looking at like the 31st seconds is crucial to get people curious. And then you have to about like one minute or two minutes to convince people to keep watching. That's how I perceive it at least. And I think that the retention type of editing that, you know, Mr. Beast made so uh, popular, I don't think that works for all audiences. And I don't think everybody wants to watch that. Like if you're making people uh, videos for people that are younger, yeah, that probably makes sense. But if you're making it for older people like myself here, like I turn that shit off in a second. 
So don't make it like that if I'm the target. And that's how we think about this, because this is people that are going out and they're running in nature and they are a bit more calm and collected uh, most of the time. They want to just sit down and watch this video and get into it. Now it cannot be super slow, I don't think, but it's still an experience they want to be in. They want to, you know, be put in that place that they are when they're running these mountains. So the real reasoning I have as I open these films is to just create that, you know, draw them in to this world, to on this mountain. That's my intent with the first 30 seconds. I just want to get them to just be there with the characters and just like start imagining, you know, running there themselves. That's the intent because that's the target audience that I'm going for. So you really got to think about like who is going to watch this, who will enjoy this and then think about like how this opening is going to be. So let's look at this opening scene. So it starts with a big drone shot and then, you know, Tim is talking about being there on the start line. He's talking about his first 100K. He's talking about how he was forced to walk uh, on his first 100K and that walking is a skill set that you have to develop. And what I'm going for here is just to create curiosity and create, you know, an interest to want to see this character. You want to capture the character as best as you can to draw people in. And you want to create questions for the audience to want to keep watching the video. And then you start introducing, as you know, the title sequence has happened, you start to introduce like the next thing. That's where you have to start establishing the goal of the video and start establishing the big challenge that we're talking about here. And in this case, it's running around Mont Blanc. The fun thing about Craft Sportswear is that we're allowed to tell stories pretty much as we want. We've built up to this because, you know, they, they didn't dare to like be wild and crazy from the beginning. But now like they've started to see because we've made these videos, they've started to see that these are actually working. People are actually watching them. They're actually commenting. They're doing like all the things that we want them to do. They do. And uh, I mean, they don't pay more for us to make them 13 minutes or whatever minutes. We, they would pay us as much, uh, you know, if we made two minute videos. It's we that want to make uh, longer videos because we know that they work better and everybody on YouTube knows that right but brands don't so this is a fresh you know outlook on how to make branded content when we start to get the, into this story you got to think about how do you connect the audience to the main character and in in this case it's through failure it's through you know not being able to do things uh, you know, uh, the stuff that people might not put in a branded documentary because the brands might not, you know, let you go deep into this. But I think that this is crucial. If you want to create identification and if you want to create a feeling of actually this person being relatable, you got to have the negative stuff. You got to have the failures. You got to have that uh, to establish that like this is somebody that is interesting and, and somebody that I want to care about. Because people can't connect with like the superstars. There's no way people can connect with somebody that runs a hundred freaking miles around Mont Blanc. There's no way. Like how many people have done that? So you gotta find other things to connect the audience to this character that you're talking about or telling a story about. What is that? Like, wh what do you do in the beginning to create a relatable connection between the audience and the character as he or she is about to go on their quest, you know? The big goal they have, the central conflict. Final one is probably the hardest 50K of your life, and it's from Champagne Lock to the Finish. I also think that music and the sound is really important when you're trying to immerse an audience into the story and through the cinematic language. For me, I think the sound editing is something that I love, but there's not really time to do that on this project. Like if the budgets go up, perhaps we can start working a bit more with that, but it, there's just no time. We just have to have 
like a very simple type of, of workflow to this if we're gonna be able to make these type of mini docs on like a regular basis. Yeah. And to do that, I've set up a template in DaVinci Resolve. It's basically just uh, an editing template that is ready mixed with like these layers that have effects on them. And, and it's like, I don't know if it says something to you, but you're busting, for instance, the dialogue. And then you have like audio ducking for the music and the sound effects so they don't take over. And you have EQ that maybe takes out certain frequencies out of the the dialogue so they don't make it you know blend too much so it becomes like clearer dialogue that's a basis for being able to accomplish something like this with with such short time frames but i also like to work with the audio in terms of the music because the music can tell the story uh, quite fast i don't like having too much music if i'm making a documentary uh, that is like has more time and, and where I can like build things up. I like to have it pretty much, you know, very minimal in terms of music. But for something like this, where you're trying to produce something very fast, but you're still trying to, you know, touch the emotions, I think music is critical because you, you gotta like mix the feelings, you gotta have the contrasts in the music. So I usually like have one and then I break off with something else or, or I would, you know, make it go quiet in between the music. But then you should think about the dynamics in the music. It shouldn't be like one type of music. Everything is electronic music. You should have a, a, a diverse type of uh, dynamic going on in terms of the music. And for me, that me means like trying to make things also unpredictable. Like I don't want everything to sound like it's a freaking you know, techno show. I don't want everything to sound like it's a freaking country show. I want it to be a mix of all this. And uh, that's what I strive for with everything I do is to, to have it be surprising. So think about how you do that when you're telling your story. You ready to post send? I hope so, but I don't know how fast you will be, we will see. I made a mistake and had four bears, but no excuses, right? No, no. I'm going to tear you up. This is a story basically about a character that is broken of all the failures during this race. But he picks himself up and in the end, you know, he stands strong. And I think that's what the audience likes, but it's also what the brand want to stand for. So think about how you tell stories that are really strong, that are really like unique and personal and true to what you want to tell but also think how that can be tied into the brand like what parts of this do the brand identify with that's key when you're doing branded docs think about what you can align with the brand's identity that's really how you get to do these things if you can just build upon what the brand stands for which means that you have to do a lot of research you have to talk to people to understand like what do they actually want when you know that you can tell stories much more easily that are really good that people actually want to watch that you can put ads on that people still watch six minutes even though it's an ad i really enjoy this like this channel it's so fun to do and I would love to do like much more of this type of stuff for more brands. But for now, this is the only channel that I run for other brands. While I do make a lot of branded content for other brands than Craft. Right now I'm actually working on a pitch for another brand. But that's for another time. So, go to learndocumentary.com if you want to watch a free masterclass on how to pitch Netflix. Otherwise... Oh yeah, you got the link in the description. Okay. See you.